today for September 23rd. Our topic is enjoy the power to love others. I'm reading from Starting Your Day Right devotions for each morning of the year written by Joyce Myers. Our anchor scripture comes from James, the second chapter, the 12th verse, and the scripture reads is thus. So speak and so act as people should, who are to be judged under the law of liberty. The moral instructions given by Christ, especially about love, Joyce writes, it can be difficult to grasp the idea of the law of liberty because law and liberty seems to be worlds apart. A law says one thing while liberty says another. I believe the law of liberty spoken of in James the first chapter the 25th verse refers to the freedom of self-control because God puts a new heart in us that wants to obey his law of love. With this new heart that Jesus gave you, you have the ability to be led of the Spirit who gives you the power and freedom to love others. I'm going to read that again. With this new heart that Jesus gave you, you have the ability to be led of the Spirit who gives you the power and the freedom to love others. Enjoy your day by allowing the Lord to love others others through you and so I reiterated that sentence because again on my own I cannot do it on my own I cannot live how God wants me to live on my own I cannot do the things that God would have for me to do on my own I cannot understand the things of God and so therefore with the new heart right we hear with the new heart that jesus gave you you have the ability to be led of the spirit so you have to be spirit filled right how am i going to be able to fulfill the will god has for my life without the holy ghost and so therefore we understand that the spirit is needed in order for me to comprehend the things of God. It's just that simple. And so therefore, I want to have, right? I want what God has for me. The Holy Ghost is a promise. And so therefore, if I want to live the way that God would have me to live, then I have to have His Spirit. And so therefore, let's talk about liberty, right? My biblical dictionary says liberty is defined freedom from bondage. The biblical definition for bondage, servitude, slavery, right? Total bondage doesn't happen in one day. It doesn't happen in one day. It's a series of steps taken that satisfies the flesh right whenever we see the spirit of bondage and operating in our lives it shows up it can show up in so many things right drugs drug addiction you know addictions to alcohol cigarettes food right those all come under bondage fears i had a cousin who my grandmother took us everywhere we traveled as kids even if it wasn't going to another state she would just road trip and drive to pa and she always had us out and about and so my cousin out of the blue she was isolated stayed in the house she was afraid to be around people and so what kind of life does a person have when they have a fear of going outside their own front door and so she was in bondage when we look at 
the Miriam's definition, Miriam dictionary definition for liberty, it says the state of being free within society from oppression, restriction imposed by authority on one's way of life, behavior, or political views. And so that's the Miriam's dictionary definition. So we still see that it has something to do with me having freedom, right? The freedom to do what is it I please, right? Nobody else is imposing their ways or um, limitation or having control over my being. As a young girl, little girl, had to have been younger than six, I was molested. Molestation affected me in two ways, right? My mind, that memory, I, I, it, it's, it's amazing the things that I was able to forget, but I was never able to forget how it felt, what he smelled like. So I had that memory, that awful memory of somebody violating my little body, right? The second thing, although I didn't know that what he was doing to me was wrong, I felt really, really bad. It just made me feel like nothing. And so there would be days as I would grow, you know, as I got older, that I, I wanted to shake that memory. I can literally smell his scent. And on the inside, I just really felt like I was dirty. And so that I carried for years, for years. And so in trying to block out that stuff, I, I, um, I began to use drugs, smoking weed, drinking. As I be entered, you know, a teenage when I became a teenager. So now, I um, meet someone abusive, mentally and physically. So on top of already, you know, what I was going through, and then to attach myself to someone that was physically and mentally abusive was the worst thing I could have done to myself and so now I'm in destructive mode I have these memories I'm feeling like I'm nothing right I'm, I'm feeling like I'm worthless and so at a very young age I did not want to live right I left home at 16 you know I'm in this strange city by myself pregnant about to have a baby and on top of that I feel worthless I didn't think that anything could ever come right out of good out of my life and so therefore I just began to break down right not really trying to get out of the situation but I was taking on more you know more drugs popping pills smoking weed drinking alcohol partying and you understand because life to me was over as far as I was concerned although I look together on the outside right I can remember as a young girl moving to Rochester I was dope right I'm from the city I'm in this country town and so my hair you know I had the box braids the door knocker earrings I was dressed I was always fly but on the inside is is where the issue was and so therefore the outside was well put together but most of the damage was on the inside that memory that I had all the mental abuse and then um, dealing with feeling worthless you know and so therefore my spirit was broken and my mind was all messy you know and then when you um, when you begin to um, you know start taking drugs and drinking your tolerance level go up and so therefore I went from just a Friday to every day right 
because every time I had those memories, I wanted to self medicate and so therefore I was rolling over out of the bed before I brushed my teeth smoking a blunt anytime I went to sleep I made sure I clipped out half a blunt so when I rolled over and so I started my day high bondage how was I able to get rid what happened to the spirit of bondage that now I have the spirit of liberty glad you asked Let's look at Luke chapter 4, the 18th verse. And I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible. Luke chapter 4, the 18th verse, verse reads as follows. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus talking. Because he has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah, to preach the good news, the gospel, to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives and recover of sight to the blind, to send forth as delivered those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken down by calamity. That was me. So right here, he's this. Is what happened to the the anointing is power right Jesus says he has he has anointed me talking about God God has anointed him he has given him power I never look right I can remember my first Bible right and much as I tried to read it and wanted to understand it I did not have the Spirit of God and so it was hard for me to understand I can remember saying to myself I may have been 20 years old and I looked at my Bible and I said well they say that God cannot lie right so what I did was I said all the words in red because we know in the King James Version about Jesus words are in red I would read those words because I said to myself, if he can't lie, then this has to be true. And I understood that because Jesus talked about what he would do. He talked about promises. He talked about a different way than what I was used to. And I wanted that. Although I didn't fully understand it, but I took what I knew. These red words... Is coming out of Jesus mouth and so here he's saying the Spirit of the Lord is upon him he has anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor right and so therefore this was me right so this is my word I snatched that I didn't want to be living like that I was too young to feel like life was over and when I looked around at everything that was around me, everything told me, end it. The only reason why I really think I did not follow through with suicide, although I made several attempts, was because of my son. I had a baby. And so I knew my mother wasn't there for me. And so I had to look at him and say, what will become of him? And so therefore, I had to find hope. And so with the spirit of bondage, right, Jesus talks about the anointing in the book of Isaiah. It says it is the anointing that breaks and destroys every yoke of bondage. Ah, the anointing is power. When people start throwing scriptures out, I'm not taken in, right? I don't get caught up. Because someone, someone has the right words. I don't get excited because I want to know, do you have some power? Because that is the only thing that is going to be able to help me. The word works. I'm not saying that you can't take a scripture and meditate on it because we know that the word works. But we're talking about faith, believing right and so the anointing has to do with power 
Let's look at Corinthians. First Corinthians, the fourth chapter and the 20th verse. And again, I'm going to read from the Amplified Version of the Bible. 1 Corinthians 4 and 20. And the scripture reads as thus. For the kingdom of God consists of and is based on not talk, but power. Moral power and excellence of soul. There came a time in my walk with the Lord that I had made up in my mind, no matter what happens, I'm going, I'm going to continue. I'm going to hold on and not allow anything to separate me from God. Nothing was going to, I got tired of backsliding. I said, Lord, no matter what, I don't care what I got to experience. I'm not going to ever turn away. I could not do it. And I can remember going through a very difficult time in my life. And as I sat on my mother couch, my phone rang. It was Prophet Ingram, my big brother in the Lord. And he encouraged me. And what he said for the first time made sense. He said, Evangelist, I want you to hear what God is saying to you in this storm. Let's think about it this way. We don't never want to go through nothing. Bear with me, I'm, I'm going to come back to that point. We never want to go through anything, right? But nevertheless, life happens, right? And so therefore, the storm didn't come to stay, right? Some years ago, my son, I was living in Rochester, he went to visit my grandmother in New York City. I had to go drive down and get him. My mother drove him down, and so when it was time to pick him up, I had to go and pick him up. I had my granddaughter with me. She was four months at the time. On our way back, coming through Albany, we came into heavy rain. The rain was so heavy, you literally couldn't see in front of you. And so therefore, it was like we was, it was sunny and then boom, we rolled into smack dead in the middle of a storm. A storm so bad, the visibility, you really couldn't see. And so what ended up happening was cars started pulling over onto the side of the road. I'll never forget this. My grandbaby was crying because it was time for her to eat. And so therefore, in my mind, she's crying. The, it's pouring down rain. I just wanted to feed her. But I did not want to pull over on the side of the road. I wanted to get to a rest area. And it maybe was about a half dozen cars, right? When, the, when I got past the first car, literally, and what they didn't know was... They all decided to stop right before the storm was over. Because when I passed that first car, I literally rode out of the storm. Looking in the rear view, I can see the storm. Do you not know I wanted to pull my car over and tell them, come on, because it's over right here, right? They literally, but see, they couldn't see. And so they, they stopped. And that's what we do, right? Right before the breakthrough, we give up right not realizing our breakthrough is right there the moment we feel like giving up and that i will always remember because if that first driver would have got out the car walked to the front of his car and stuck his hand out he would have been half his arm would have been outside of the storm i can see it in my rear view mirror and it was sunshine all the way up and so now i'm saying to myself wow if only they knew they stopped right before the storm and so when a storm come, it didn't come to stay. And so Prophet Ingram said to me, 
The Lord is saying to you in this storm, He's about to give you power. He said, be encouraged, woman of God. He said, this storm, this storm, God is birthing something into you. He said, God is going to give you the power to bring every atmosphere that is not like God. You're going to have the power to bring everything under subjection to the Spirit of God. And when I hung up the phone, I thought about that. I really didn't understand it because, again, I was hurt. I was going through. I had nothing. I was back at my mother's house on her couch. But nevertheless, he prayed with me. And I believe a week later, I continued to fast, stay in my word. I refused to backslide. And everything was telling me, just go party. You know what you do when you don't like something. But I had made up in my mind I wasn't. And when I went over my kid's aunt's house, right, she was like partying and so I hadn't I had been in town for a week or so and I would ride by and blow but this one particular day I stopped and I came over and so when I got there it's like the crowd was like all right bye you know and everybody left you know I didn't think nothing of it and so maybe the next week you know came because I wasn't working I stopped over and this, again, it was a bunch of people, and then they left. And so she said to me, every time you show up, everybody leaves. And it dawned on me. I said, well, tell the Lord thank you. She said, tell the Lord thank you. I said, I got rid of every demon that was up in here. Because why else would they leave? I didn't tell them to leave. This ain't my house. This your house, right? If they're here for whatever reason they're here for, why when I come, they leave? And God had shown me. That's what Prophet Ingram was talking about. Somebody showed up with some power. Right? The devil know who he's a match for. And there's certain people that he don't want to deal with. And at that time, I realized when I'm going through... That's when I'm most dangerous. And so therefore, the kingdom of God is not just words. When we talking about anointed and the anointing, then folks should be getting saved. The Bible say he who wins souls is wise. I'm a soul winner for the kingdom. But I do that with power. Right? I can pray and people be, what? Come back to me and say, you know what? You pray and God did it and that thing happened and it worked. You understand? Power. You know, but people are not wanting power. They want scriptures and they want you to think that they so deep and so, because they can. No, 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 no. Paul says, ah. Uh, For the kingdom of God consists of and is based on not talk, but power. Moral power and excellence of soul. You should have some type of authority, right? How am I going to fight the enemy? Power. Power. That is the only way. We be it, we're a because he has power, but God gives us power, and so it's not about the right words. It's all. It's not about the right words to say. But it has to reflect God. I, what I'm saying has to reflect God power. Somebody should be able to see that I have some type of power. Right? And so therefore, in, 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 in staying in my word, right? Because if God anoints me, right? How do I increase in my anointing? I'm in my word. I'm in um, prayer. And so therefore, that's how, you know, people don't just overnight become a sensation or... No! It's a process. You only get out what you put in. And so therefore, the word, we do all of this. We learn how to, I, if, if I realize that I am in bondage, and like I said, I was young, ready to kill myself. But in my mind and in my heart, I did not want to live that way. So how about, if I can see, not even save long enough to understand the word, 
But I found a way to say, you know what? The words in redneck, that is Jesus talking. So if he's, ta he's talking to me. So whatever he's saying, that's for me. I found a way to get what I want until I was able to have the power. I mean, how bad do you want it? You know, people set all these goals and, oh yeah, I'm going to start my own business and yeah, I'm going to school for my master's and, and that's all fine and dandy. But when my daughter was on her deathbed, nothing I learned at the college, nothing that the university taught me, there wasn't a, 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 a quiz or the, 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 the dream house or what was in the bank account, none of that mattered. None of that, what I was driving, none of that mattered. Would allow God to give me the power to bind death. Whatever I bind on earth. Matthew 18, 18 says it will be bound in heaven. Heaven got my back. It takes some power. I was not able to speak what God gave me to speak. To allow her, let's just remember, the doctor said she's dying. So I'm not sitting here exaggerating and she was in an accident, but she was all right. No, 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 no. She was in an IC unit for three, ICU unit for three days. That third day they came to me, they said, she is dying. What good was the job? What good was the dream house? What good had that dream car money in the bank account not degrees on the not the credentials did not help me in that situation power ah thank you jesus but it's not the power that nikki possessed i have a powerful spirit in my life that spirit didn't just come upon me powerful no sir word trials tribulations staying with god seeking god submitting myself to god do you know now what i see and i hear some new believers come into the church they get so excited because they're in a position oh the pastor got me working on this and i help i'm helping with the budget that is skill set Church is a business, right? That is skill set. What I do for Christ matters. That's the only thing that's going to matter. That's the only thing that lasts. God is not going to come to me and ask me about my job come judgment day. No, sir. Skill set. It's not power. The church secretary, she needs to have some power. But if she's only operating off of her skill set, she's not really concerned about what's going on in the, you understand? Because in her mind, she's the church secretary. She organizes stuff. And that's skill. That's not power. I said to somebody, there was a time when I had no power, struggling in my faith. Right, my ex-husband was all kind of crazy. The kids was all kind of crazy. And when I look back now, right, the devil was in control. After I got some power, things changed instantly. Because understand this, the enemy can't he can't coexist under my roof he's not in control i am in my house right and so therefore when god gave me power he started telling me lay hands on that son call out that spirit of manipulation anoint your daughter's pillow what he started allowing me to see who's in operation again it's a spiritual warfare that's what Paul said. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. I have to be able to know who's in operation. And so sometimes people don't understand. We be entertaining demons. Demon up singing, whatever. And, and the demon in the crowd just 
you know, these spirits. We're entertaining these spirits. You gotta be able to discern something. Sometimes God showed me some stuff that I say, whoa. And I always have people that I can call on and say, listen, I don't know what this mean and why I seen it. And they will let me know when you get to a certain place in God, why would God not allow me to know the enemy is in my midst? He's not that type of, that's just like if my son come home and I see a friend that's a little shady, you know, okay, hi, mm-hmm. And the moment he's gone, I'll say to my son, listen, that, that ain't your friend. I can let you know right now, that is not your friend. Because we see something. As parents, we know. So I would never let my kid be hanging out with a friend that I know is not good for him. Why wouldn't God allow me to know? And, and the scary part about that is, I can remember saying, God, show me who's in my mess. Show me who's around me. Trust you me. I didn't like what I seen. And I had to come to the realization that most of them demons was in my house, my kids. And, and so therefore, when God gave me the authority and I was mature enough, granted, I didn't have it all together, but he was trusting me, right? He was giving me what I need to fight, right? One can chase a thousand, two can put ten thousand to flight. So I should be able to do something on my own. And truth be told, before I have any ministry outside of the house, I have to be able to minister to my family. That's my first ministry. And my kids knew. And after a while, they ain't play. They ain't come home until they sobered up. You know, but before they was, oh my goodness. They was running amok in my house. Imagine that. Here I am working, serving God, and the enemy is in full control in my house. But when God gave me power to roll the table turn, baby, I took authority, right? Jesus say in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give unto you power. Power to do what? Huh? Tread on top of scorpions. Tread on top of the serpent. What? And nothing by any means shall hurt you. That's in red. And so therefore... He's talking about me. Get power. This is the power that Joyce writes about. The power. The power to love. Right? Because even when you receive power. Right? I can love some people. It's easy to love somebody who loves you back. But again, with the Holy Ghost. I can love people that's hard to love. And it wasn't an overnight. And I'm still learning. I'm still learning. But Jesus said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. So I'm not pointing fingers, right? I'm not condemning folks. I try to show love. I drive. I have all type of people in my car. And when I read some of these reviews, they say she's the only driver that helped me. She's the only driver that brought my bags to my love. And some of these people don't even say good morning when they get in my car. But I still show the love. See, it's it's the spirit that's in me. Because Nikki say, I speak when I'm spoken to. Some of them I speak and they don't speak back. They may be prejudiced. Oh well. You know, I leave it at that. I don't take it personally. But I still go out my way. The love of God. Right? Because that makes people say, you know what, she was a good driver. I wish there were more drivers like her. The reviews that I, I read, they blow my mind. And Pastor um, Joanne Thompson, she had made a comment because I had posted, I really didn't pay attention to the feedback from the passengers. And so when I, excuse me, started paying attention to it, I started posting them because I, these are people that are just in my car for a brief moment not long enough to even you know so I, that's why I never really paid attention to it but when I started looking at it she is like no other so I'm anointed I'm not supposed to be like every other drop there's supposed to be something different about me the anointing the anointing is a truth revealer the anointing is power the anointing gives me the capacity and the ability to love people as God would have me to. No matter if they say good morning or not. I'm not a doormat. But nevertheless, I do 
what I know is right to do, like it or not. And so people are, have this, a woman came into town on Monday. They have the UN going on. She was, a, 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 she was running late, came in, it was rainy. She couldn't, she had to get all the way from LaGuardia to Jersey. And what she didn't know was the whole east side was shut down because of the UN. I had her and another gentleman. He jumped out my car in Queens. He said, you know what, forget this, I'm getting on a train. She got out, I ended the ride, right? 25-17, the ride was over. She walked up the block, but because the traffic was so thick, right? I couldn't move. She ended up coming back. Now, mind you, the ride is over. I pop my trunk, I let her in. She gets in the back seat, she's huffing and puffing. Then she sees, she says, well, I'm going to order another ride, you know, just accept it because now she's in my car. And then once she's seen how much they was going to charge her, now she's, she, she was annoyed completely. Spirit said, take her to Jersey. I didn't offer it up real quick because I was, I was stuck in traffic. I was ready to go home. I'm not going to lie. It was the end of my day. So I would be lying if I sat here and said, I jumped on it. Every time the spirit would tell me to do something, I jump on it. No, because certain things you have to understand. There'd be a, a, a conversation going on with self. I'd be saying, you know what, Nick? I know you want to go home. Your rent is raining. Your knee is bothering you. You're hungry. But do that which is right. And so I looked up in the rearview mirror. I said, Anita, if you like, I will take you to Jersey. She said, I'm about to cry. I said, no, don't cry. She was like, well, do you have um, the Western Union app I send you? I said, no. If I offer to take you to Jersey, now we sitting outside the Midtown Tunnel. We haven't even made it out of Queens. In the pouring down rain, it took us an hour to even get into Manhattan. Another hour to get over to Jersey. She said, I cannot believe that you're willing to do this and not get paid for it. Enjoy the power to love others. When she got out my car, she said, I do not believe this. You are an angel. I took that woman all the way to Jersey free of charge. Do you not know that that will forever affect her? But it wasn't me, so I don't want to get no glory. It was the God in me. And so that's what she's talking about here. The moral instruction given by Christ, especially about love. That's it. Because he lives, I can do what he instructs me to do. Because he lives, I don't have a problem with showing compassion and, and showing love and kindness towards those who's not even kind towards me. Because he lives, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. He lives. I don't know about nothing else. I don't know about... You know, they have so many things that they trying to prove all these theories. Don't ask me. I don't know if 911 was an inside job, right? I don't know if uh, uh, the reason why they killed all the terrorists because uh, um, the Illuminati wanted to control them. I don't know about that stuff. But that that I do know. He lives. I know that I serve a living God. I know that I serve a risen Savior. He lives. And because He lives, I can be a better me. You can be a better you. Because He lives, I, I, I'm set free. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. I'm not in bondage no more. I'm no longer a part of the can't help it. I can help it. Because He lives. Be blessed. Stay blessed. Until next time.